Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Latcher from Spring Hill Equine and the podcast Straight from the Horse Doctor's Mouth. Today, we're going to talk about four stretches you can do and a DIY setup device you can make at home to help prolong your horse's soundness and happiness. All right, let's start with the tools of the trade. The best way to get stretches are carrots or treats, uh, whatever motivates your horse best. The nice thing about carrots is you can keep your hand away from the mouth if needed. Uh, my guys, I usually use treats because I use them for other things as well. So the treats work really well. As you can see, Vespa's fairly motivated. Uh, Vespa's pretty motivated by treats, that's for sure. So let's start with the first one I do, and this is a common one that people come with, uh, but I have a little bit of a twist on it. So we're gonna ask her to stretch her head to the side. Notice where I'm standing. I'm standing with my back against her and I'm asking her to bring her head out as opposed to just around. What this does is gets a way better stretch across this whole top line in a circle as opposed to just asking her to bend her neck all the way around. The next thing we're gonna watch on this is I want her ears to be nice and level. So see how she's got a little bit of a twist to them here? <laughs> That's not quite correct. I actually want her to bring her ears nice and level with each other. And this is actually why I find treats work better for me. So I will often stand here once I get the idea where I want the stretch to go. And then I use my hand up against the, the side of the neck here to gauge where their head is. And that's how I get a way better stretch from them. I like to do that stretch both directions, hold it for about a count of five and repeat it three times. So that's to the right, hold for five and repeat three times. To the left, hold for five, repeat three times. And again, these are kind of like the balance pads if you saw the balance pad video. These are things that I can do quickly and easily right before I get on or right after I get off. Stretching is actually best done after horses have exercised. So if you wanna do these after you ride, you'll get the most benefit from them. Okay, stretch number two. There's two components to this one. One, I ask them to stretch. <laughs> I ask them to stretch to their chest like this. Ah, doesn't help when you drop the treat. Makes the reward harder. <laughs> Um, your goal when you're doing this, one of the couple of things you want to watch is you'd like her to be, see how she's a little bit off center? Our goal is that she stays in the very center. Unfortunately, we've practiced these a few times this morning, and so she's being a little bit of a treat hound. She's not normally this bad. But you want to do the, the nose to chest. That offers a good stretch of this area right here. Much better stretch of the lower neck. Then you want to do nose down low. So this one I go for between the fetlocks. And again, my goal is that her head is nice and straight. The between the fetlocks one does a much better stretch of the top line here. And if I'm doing them for real, again, my goal is that I get her to hold for a count of five. Come here. And I repeat three times. So that one again, much better stretch through the top line. The chin to the chest gives us a really good stretch of, of this lower neck area. Uh, does great things for there. All right, really, really, really great top line stretch for me is what you guys have probably seen as kind of belly tucks or I call them butt scrunches. It's the same stretch, it just depends on the horse as to which way you do it. Some of them are easier to get to do it one way versus the other. Um, some tools of the trade for this one are a hoof pick if you need really pokey, or I like to use the rounded end of a main comb if I don't need as much pokey. But what you're gonna do is take your hand and you're just gonna go along the bottom until you find the spot that gets them to tuck. 
she's not very good at this this way. Um, she pulled up a little bit. You may be able to see it on this view that her back line came up a little. And what you'll see is that you actually see it go down easier than you see it go up. So let's try it with the comb. I'm gonna do the same thing there. You can see that that gets her to pick up even better. I don't have a lot of pressure on this hand. It's just keeping me from falling over. And on some horses, I'll take the, the pokey bit of a hoof pick. And again, I just start to slowly add pressure, but you can see that gets her to pick it up a little bit faster and better. And each horse is gonna be a little bit different on the spot. I tend to start at the front, work my way back until I find the spot that works best for them. Again, on this, like all the others, you're going to hold for a count of five, repeat three times. So this is what we call the butt scrunch. And again, for each horse, it's gonna be a little bit different, but what you're looking for is on the side of the tail somewhere will be a spot that when you scratch it, they tuck their butt. And it's usually, so I start at the level of the top of the tail, and then I work my way down the side until I find the happy place. And they'll hold it there. There we go. And your goal is to see how high, from the back anyways, you can get the pelvis to go. Again, you can use your pointy things to help this if you need to. And if you're worried about them kicking you, you wanna stand really close as opposed to really far away. Now you see that Vespa likes to, to jig on this one and that's okay. I just try to go until she's quiet and then I let up. And then we work on getting better and better at that. It's not her favorite stretch by a long shot. And that's because she is a little weak through her lower back and this stretch really stretches that area for her. All right, there was a recent scientific paper that actually came out on this last stretch we're gonna do, and it is the tail pull. You don't wanna do this too hard and you don't wanna do it too gentle. So we're gonna talk about some guidelines for what too hard is more than too gentle. But you're gonna grab the tail, find the, the tail bone, the bottom of it. I hold with both hands just below that. And then I'm gonna bring the tail out at about a 45 degree angle to the body. And again, if your horse is not great for this and you're worried about them kicking, you wanna slowly work up to that, right? So I'm gonna stand close to her and I'm gonna pull down like this with a hand here so I can push her away. Then I'm gonna add more and more pressure from here until I feel confident that she's gonna let me get behind her. Then I'll start close with, I've got pretty firm, I would say I probably have about 10 pounds of pressure down here, but I have enough that like I'm, I'm pulling and she can feel it, but I wanna make sure that I feel safe. Then I'm gonna to go to where I actually wanna be, which is at about a 45 degree angle out from the body. I like to take this hand and put it sideways like this. Then I'm gonna get into a good squat. So you wanna be in a nice kind of wall sit position. And I just have my body weight on here. So I'm not really pulling, pulling, I'm just body weighting and then I'm just gonna do this and I'm gonna hold it for 30 seconds. And they do sometimes back up like she's doing. So that's where you wanna be ready with them on cross ties. Now you see how she's resting her foot. I'm gonna pull her tail to ever so slightly one side or the other until she sets. And again, we're gonna hold this for about 30 seconds. Just that 30 second hold was shown to do amazing things for basically stretching out that whole top line backwards. So there you go, four stretches. All right, let's talk about a DIY uh, band system. The band systems have really pretty good work on them showing how they activate the horse's core and they build the multifidus muscle. The multifidus muscle is a very tiny, very important muscle. We talked about it with the balance pads as well, if you haven't seen that video. Uh, but the multifidus is a tiny muscle on either side of your vertebrae that helps keep your vertebrae where it's supposed to be. So it prevents kind of that rotation. And in terms of back pain, it's really, really, really key. It's this teeny tiny muscle that gets incredibly painful. So this is a DIY system, but we're gonna use a tarp clip, a little bit of rope. You can also use uh, any sort of clip for this that you can tie the TheraBand stuff through. This is, it's actually the generic TheraBand stretchy stuff. 
off of good old Amazon, but you want to get either the heaviest stretch or the next one down. You want to go for really, 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 really tough because uh, this is a horse after all. Your goal is to pull about 50% of the stretch out of it. Uh, and then you're going to go through, whether this is a clip or a piece of rope, you're going to go through that. So I pull again, kind of like the butt stretch. You don't necessarily start here. You may start with a little less, although I've been surprised at how well they've all tolerated it. Vespa is my sensitive soul. And I really thought I was going to get bucked off the first time I tried this and she didn't really care. So I just tie a knot in it. I'll go back then and you can see it's gotten a little scrunched. So I just go back and make it wide. And what this is doing is basically that belly stretch that we did. It's, it's making her do that while I'm doing exercises with her. So now I'll go out and do five to seven minutes of just walking. Uh, I start there for sure. I might do a little bit of trotting, but the key with these is you don't do a whole lot. You don't need to do a lot to get the benefits of it. Uh, think about walking around for five minutes with your, your ab muscles tightened up and it's not an easy process. So don't ask for a lot from this. You'll get a lot of benefit with very minimal. Uh, okay. The other thing we can do with it, as you've probably seen from other versions of this that are out there is you can do it around the hind end too. And again, that's just going to do the same thing where it stimulates them to kind of tuck their butt and bring their back up. You can do both at the same time. I always start with just this one and then graduate to adding both if I want to. But the way you do that and the way you get the tarp clips on is I'm going to unscrew this just a little bit. It loosens it up. I'm going to slide it down my saddle pad. I have found that the saddle pads with the piping on them hold these the best, but you know, there we go. And then I'm going to play with the angle on this. Tightening it down. Again, I'm going to play with the angle on this. You can see she's got a little bit of a dimple here where it's pulling, but you just want to play until you find the spot where it stays the best in terms of tension and location. Generally, the, again, it's about 50% of the stretch taken out. And then you just tie your knot and off you go. Again, surprising to me how well tolerated this is. I really expected to go for a bit of a ride the first time I tried it, but um, this is my most sensitive redheaded mare here and she, she handled it pretty well. Uh, so again, an advanced step is to have the two together. I always start with the belly one, then add this one. If in doubt, just do five minutes of hand walking around until you're sure they feel good about it. You can also do this while doing groundwork with just a sur single on. <laughs> the one caveat to that, Make sure you have your surf single very tight. You can see there's, there's tension on this and it will pull your saddle pad right out from underneath your saddle or your surf single, especially as they're moving. But there's a quick and easy DIY setup for you that can really give you a big bang for your buck. Um, like I said, I'll do this for five to seven minutes. I'll get on, go walk around, and then I'll unhook. That is where the, the snaps can make it easier. If you got a good one, you can just unsnap it from the saddle, do the rest of your ride, and then, uh, then you're all set to go. We all want our horses to last longer and stay sounder. These four quick stretches and the, the band DIY project will help you get more bang for your buck out of your horse. And none of them take a lot of time. So even better for the working professional trying to get all they can out of the hours in the day. I want to send a special shout out to our patrons. We can't do what we do without you. So thank you so much for being patrons. <laughs>